beautiful souls and welcome to your solar eclipse reading. So we have the new moon in Aries. Um, with this, I would almost see, we're almost going to be seeing like the shadow energy of Aries. Um, seeing why um, perhaps the Aries energy or the masculine energy became that energy in the first place. I kind of look at it lately, like with war and stuff going on, it's almost like, you know, if men are bored and just want to prove that their balls are bigger, why not just, you know, put them in a room and they can suck each other off below a load instead of blowing up your people. That's just my personal opinion. Um, so the energies that are being inf um, influenced the most are going to be Virgo and Libra. So Virgo is kind of the maiden, youthful energy exploration. It can also be connected to service and health. Libra's energy is all about balance and relationships. So there's almost like a, a reboot, a temporary disconnect to bring in balance within relationships and health. A good time to do some karmic cleansing of youth ideals and social interactions. So I've gone ahead and pulled out um, the cards for this reading. We're going to be working with the Oracle of the Unicorns, the Star Codes Astro Oracle, the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle, Angels of Atlantis Oracle cards, and the Divine Animals Oracle. So let's get into the reading. So the first card that wants to come out, we have the goddess energy. Honor your divine feminine energy. See your inner beauty and love every part of you. So I do love this because the um, divine feminine energy is kind of overseeing the um, masculine principles evolution. We have the energy of growth. Seek out and mentor Seek out a mentor or guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. So with the goddess energy, you are a miracle gracing planet Earth with your beauty. You do not need shinier hair, whiter teeth, or slimmer figure in order to embody the goddess. She is the infinite love you hold in your heart. She is the deep wisdom that flows from your soul. She is the light in your eyes and the warmth of your smile. She is the hands you use to heal and comfort. She is the pleasure your body is capable of experiencing through giving and receiving touch, which is interesting. Um, she is the hands you use to heal and comfort. I'm just noticing the card or the picture on the in the guidebook. Your culture disempowers you by conditioning you to hate or even abuse your body in order to serve your natural connection with the goddess. The media sets impossible standards of beauty, so you shrink into feelings of inferiority or insignificance. This unicorn goddess urges you to rise up and reclaim your right to feel beautiful from within, exactly as you are. She tells you to turn back on the pressure to look a certain way and cherish your miraculous body just as it is. Set your own standards of beauty, starting with the love, wisdom, compassion, and radiance within you. For men, the message is the same. Shun the pressure to look like a sculptured statue and focus on strengthening your heart. Honor all of the parts of you that, have dis that you may have disowned before and treat your body like the divine temple that it is. Walk with your head held high, your heart open wide, and let the world see the goddess or heart warrior, heart warrior that walks before them. Now with the card of growth, I mean, this card is pretty self-explanatory. It does look like there's a mentor or guide helping um, raise this young calf here. Um, most likely this goddess, feminine nurturing energy, helping it grow or helping the collective grow. This winged horse wants you to know that you're ready for your next stage of growth. And it is time to find someone who can guide you on your journey. Look for a mentor who has already walked the path you wish to take and can support your learning and expansion. You may feel called to take on some new study or training in your field of expertise or to embark on a new career altogether. We have angel number 44. You may feel guided to work more deeply on your spiritual growth and elevate to a higher vibration. Whatever your next level is, the patient winged horse invites you to take baby steps in your growth, just like her foal. Be willing to make mistakes and know it's okay to be imperfect as you learn. 
You don't have to know everything at once, and you will never know everything there is to know. Be open to receiving wisdom and guidance from someone with the experience or skills you seek. Let go of comparing your progress with anyone else. You are doing your best, and that is plenty. Plus, the journey is always personal to each individual, right? So it's never going to reflect exactly as somebody else's does. Enjoy the journey of being a student and take your growth at your own pace. Keep calling in the perfect mentors to take you to each new level and trust they will always appear when you're ready. So this is kind of like gathering the information, the wisdom on your journey. Um, the building blocks, the fundamentals, if you will. So we have Saturn's energy with structure. So I do see Saturn kind of connected to our karma. And the sooner we can start um, observing and witnessing our karma, we can start to evolve and shift those cycles to heal them um, with, I believe this is Chiron's energy. We have the Midheaven of Pinnacle. So I would see this as kind of like the midway point. It's like observing um, the karma, the history of the past acknowledging it accepting the wisdom and seeing the way forward perhaps with new structures new ideals new beliefs but this is still just a midway point right it's kind of like um the shift from the pisces era into the aquarius era so pisces can be connected to the yin and yang energy, the balance of that energy, black and white, right and wrong, where Aquarius can be a little more open-minded, but when you shift into Aquarius energy, the the Pisces, Pisces era and history still kind of lingers in the atmosphere, so it's not like a, a clean switch over. It takes time to transition through these energies and embrace new ideals, new beliefs, new habits. The Midheaven contains clues about how your family trained you to be visible in the world, your relationship to other people's authority, and how you step into your own personal authority. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. The Midheaven is the highest point of the chart, where the sun would be at midday. This most public visible point of the chart acts like a flagpole on top of your personal castle. Inventory your professional reputation and ask what you can do to strengthen it. Update your website, look at your definition of success and make sure it is your own. Actually makes you happy and is not one you have inherited from your family or mentors. Think about the training you've received from these authorities and notice where it still serves you and where you need to release their preconceptions and step into something bigger. You may need to go back to hidden dreams or reawaken an ambition that may not make sense to anybody else. We have angel number 88. 88 is connected to the dragon. We are in the year of the dragon. 88 is the my year of birth actually reduced it would be a 16 which i do see this as kind of um the circle of life all zodiacs and the four main directions 16 reduced would be a seven which is exactly what i'm kind of getting from this card is very um libra energy the balancing um i kind of see the scales of that in egyptian with the heart and the ostrich feather to see if the heart is heavier than the ostrich feather and, and at most points it most likely the heart would be heavier right but that's the point is clearing and healing the heart to evolve through past trauma experiences preconceived ideas if you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outside world, your midheaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define the mountaintop for yourself. Take a next step in that direction. The challenge of the midheaven, traditions, other people's expectations, or your family history may be complementary to your idea of your own potential, or they may be hurdles to overcome as you find your true path. The gift of the midheaven, underneath all worldly sense of ambition, is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. So the challenge with Saturn's energy. Be careful not to cling to old concept conceptions of success or hold on to brittle systems that restrict potential and leave people discouraged. The gift, the ancestors call you to wisdom and maturity to know your gifts and limitations. This process may be an initiation, a test that empowers you. We have 65, which is an 11. 
you put in, or you get back what you put in type of energy. So I do see 11s as karmic gateways. They would also be connected to um, Aquarius's energy, which is all about hopes, wishes, friends, and community. So it, the energy I've been working with lately is kind of removing the toxic or poisonous seeds of the past and then planting optimistic, hopeful seeds for the future, for abundance and growth for the entire collective. So with 11s, if you start seeing 11s, try to put in... Um, well, you don't even have to see 11s, but try to try to look for silver linings. Try to um, step outside of yourself and put yourself into somebody else's shoes. And then you may be able to offer them the right wisdom or push them kind of in the right direction. So I'm feeling called to pull from the tarot. This is the learn to read tarot. This, by the way, is obviously the Oracle of the Unicorns, and this is the Star Codes Astro Oracle. Please reveal to me what the collective needs to know at this time. So this may not be a time to um, to push things forward. The Eight of Wands can be um, fast-moving energy, but with it reverse, it's like slowing down, which kind of makes sense with the Eclipse, right? That kind of break in the circuit. We have the Magician's energy. So this is like slowing down, reclaiming balance before proceeding and manifesting further. The Two of Swords, Decisions and Choices. Um, with the Two of Swords, um, she is blindfolded, so I do kind of see this as um, meditation can actually help with one's stability here, following one's subconscious energy with the moon being over on the side of stability of the body, which is connected, the side would be connected to the feminine. The left is the feminine, the right is the masculine however the head is reversed so this is actually the um, intuition or logic of the masculine energy here then we have the seven of swords so this is almost like removing false truths and leaving um, what is actually true so there may be obviously in history in our own everyone's own individual um, growth and evolution, there's lies and truths, obviously, so it's almost sorting out one's own morals, one's own ideals, what truly resonates to you as, a, as an individual as opposed to perhaps what you've been taught. So that brings us into the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle. We have Gemini's energy with curiosity, intellect, and networking. There is beauty and freedom enlightening your connection to the earth. While your deep connections and commitments are an important part of life, there is also value in detachment, which is kind of where that Eight of Wands in reverse is kind of coming in here. Where can you lighten up and stop taking things so seriously? Where can you step outside of your routine and infuse some versatility? Experiment with different ways of responding to life, approaching them as playful taste tests. Seek new experiences and light connections. Open your mind and welcome energetic movement. Play with letting life pass through you and not holding things so tightly. So I'm getting the, um, the energy of Libra and the scales, right? Which can be um, the scales, they, they ebb and flow, which is very much giving me the infinity symbol here. The ebbs and flows of people, the versatility of life and nature itself. Which brings us, oh look at that, Venus energy, the ruling planet of Libra. Give and receive love, find value and see beauty. So this is kind of interesting just because we have the pearl, right? So a pearl is technically made of, by like a, grand of, a grain of sand getting into um, a clam or an oyster here. 
and basically it builds upon it. So it's kind of very much like that, um, the Mars energy with growth. So Mars is known as the like planet or god of war, right? And it's like, where does that irritation come from? It's kind of like my um, suspicion of good old Hitler, right? I could see that in a couple ways. One, I could see that, um, I don't know if he was, but I, I keep seeing him as like an actually like, a very rich man, but it's almost like money can't buy love, right? So there could be the energy of, even though there was a lot of money, a lot of resources, the home life could have been empty, which causes basically a child or people as people always want attention, whether it's negative or positive, we all kind of crave that attention from time to time. So balancing that energy can change the outcome. Your angels envelop you with the energy of love. This is a time to prioritize pleasure by indulging in your favorite self-care. Soak in a candlelit bath or gift yourself flowers. Decorate and cherish your beautiful body and surround yourself with things that awaken divine feminine energy. Honor yourself as you would a loved one. Revel in your talents by giving them time and attention. Allow yourself moments of beauty, whatever that means to you. Recognize what makes you feel loved and valued and share this truth with those around you. If you are in partnership, this will deepen your connection. And if you're seeking partnership, honoring Venus will attract your perfect mate. We have a 47, which reduced is another 11. What you put in, what you put into yourself will be reflected in your exterior, exterior world, external world. Same goes for other people in your path, right? And if you plant those positive seeds or silver lining, that can be reflected in their external world. So we have Saturn showing up again, feeling restricted, experiencing struggle, learn hard work and patience. So everything takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. Patience can be a tricky one. This is something that I did years ago and I'm finding myself having to do again now. But this could even be like if you're stuck in traffic, like trying not to get mad, just take a deep breath and relax and trust. And the more you trust and let go, you still end, for myself anyway, I still ended up making it two places on time instead of trying to rush to get there or standing in a line at a store, right? If there's a line, I'm just trying to breathe and trust the process because as soon as you do that, things actually seem to start moving quicker. But you definitely may, I mean, we all feel restricted at sometimes and experience struggle. But it's learning to kind of see it from a more optimistic approach will actually release the, the tension, the anger, the feeling of being restricted itself. And we have Capricorn's energy, ambition, realism, and methodical steps. So this is kind of that energy of this too, it shall pass, all in good timing here, things evolve working on what you can in the moment. And sometimes if you're feeling burnt out and struggle, struggling, what you can work on is cleansing your energy, taking the time to be bored, to allow yourself the grace of stillness, which a lot of times we always want to be on the move, right? And sometimes that helps. Other times we really need to relax and allow ourselves to not need to do anything one step at a time um, for any of you that are doing some soul searching you may want to work with the 12 steps of na you don't have to be an addict for this but the 12 steps can actually help um, clear some past experiences some things that you may be struggling with to find your own solid ground and rebuild um, from a stronger foundation. So the wisdom of the animal kingdom that is being reflected back to us at this time from the divine animals oracle, we have the tiger of will. I do love that this is coming out because I just, um, my mom actually got me for Christmas this like blanket hoodie, I guess it is. 
with a big tiger's face on the back. I just hung up on my vision board. Love me some tigers. So we have 34, which reduced is again Libra's energy, finding finding the balance, the equilibrium. Very much like Gemini. Gemini I kind of see as the light and shadow. Um, perhaps using your light to heal your shadow. So exercise your will and determination in ethical ways. Do not place your will over another's. You do not have control over anyone but yourself. Do not be afraid to be fierce, especially as a woman. We can ride our healthy anger, but we must eventually transform it into something more useful. So do not be afraid to be fierce, especially as a woman or man. Durga came riding into people's lives on the back of a snarling tiger. She was a warrior and carried weapons to subdue and destroy, yet her face was serene and calm. It was the evils of life she was after. The false illusions. Right, coming through with the Seven of Swords. And tapping into one's intuition. The Hindu goddess Durga is the embodiment of the powerful feminine energy of Shakti, and she wields it mightily to make the way clear. She protects the natural order of nature and the nature of the self. She rides her tiger to brute preserve the will we have towards what good we can do and towards subduing the negative parts of our will that may wish to play that we may wish to place upon others so we are not controlled by these impulses she swings her eight arms and destroys what is evil not only does durga grab the tiger by the tail she rides it So one of the most recognizable animals, animals on earth due to their markings, the tiger is part of the panthera genus. Tigers are the largest of the big cats and even tigresses are capable of taking down prey in excess of their own body weight. Tigers are found in Russia, Asia, and India with the largest population in the latter. They are diurnal carnivorous hunters eating small to medium prey such as antelope, pigs, monkeys, and deer, and sometimes birds and fish. They tend to be binge eaters and consume huge amounts of flesh, up to 30 kilograms in one sitting. They are good swimmers. Tigers are territorial and range over very big territories, enjoying a variety of habitats. This has become a problem as most tigers now live in countries where the populations of humans is dense and their habitat has been much reduced. Tigers have been known to kill and eat humans, but this usually occurs when they are being hunted by humans. I would say that with most animals um really like humans and people are not so much different i feel like a lot of um animals and humans usually only attack when they feel like really threatened right like if you're backed into a corner so treat it with respect and it'll treat you with respect Tiger magic is wild and mysterious. It is the energy we can use to counter jealousy, threat, and rage. It is highly protective and helps us find a more resourceful way to deal with difficult situations and people. Tiger magic is feminine in aspect, and women can use it to help them gain confidence and to find their healthy fierceness. Symbologies that may connect you to the tiger as your power animal. We have stripes, glowing eyes in the dark, and woman riding a tiger. There are currently less than 4,000 tigers in the world. They are critically endangered. It's stuff like that where I wish people would kind of just leave them alone instead of like force breeding them. But that's just, that's my personal opinion when it comes to um, animals that go extinct. For one thing, you know, stop hunting them. That would be the obvious, you know, um, solution. But force breeding them, like if they're meant to stay, they will stay. If they're meant to fade away, they will fade away. That is just the design. Kind of allow it to be. But I'm seeing the color gold here, so I would see it gold as one's um, truest or purest heart's desire. Like, it's almost like, what is your truest heart's desire aside from societal norms? Like, 
Yes, most of us want like family, connection, um, job security, financial security, but all that kind of stuff aside, what is it that your heart truly would long for if like money wasn't an issue kind of thing? Kind of like your true heart's desire and purpose. Um, I was, this card is reminding me of a movie. It's called Two Brothers. Um, which is about two, two, um, brother tigers and their mother. You may want to check that out. That's a good movie. Anyway, let's move on to the next layout of the reading. So we have the mutable signs with surrender, fluidity, and welcoming change. What is it? Um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Then we have the yin energy, that feminine energy. Intuition, trust, patience, spirituality, and receptivity. So the mutable signs energy can be fickle, unstable, and wishy-washy, but that's probably kind of normal when we're transitioning from certain ideals or beliefs to the next, right? It's kind of the unknown, so it's hard. It's not always easy to embrace or accept the new, right? Now the yin energy. Allow space for stillness. Release any pressure to perform or express. Travel inward. Nurture your private world. Go for a gentle walk in nature. Sit for a warm cup of tea or take an afternoon nap. Anything that supports you in deep presence with self. You don't need to look outside yourself for definition or validation. Trust in this moment. Marinate in this magical space where anything is possible. It's funny. It's bringing me back to something I was trying to do on my own journey, which is like lounge like a cat. I do a lot of, um, or I used to, a lot of meditations but with meditations they always tell you to keep your like spine straight and I'm always trying to like perfectly align my balance to keep my arms at equal distance my feet straight to keep my spinal straight with the tiger it's basically trying to do the same thing but allowing your body to soften and basically just fall wherever the hell it wants to so that could be some guidance for some of you if you feel um, like I do at times a little like rigid in life As a long-term practice, consider your balance between yin and yang, your spiritual life and physical life. Both vital energies ebb and flow within as two sides of creation. Do you feel a harmonious balance? Yin is the energy of divine feminine, one half of creation. This is the subterranean, subconscious realm of conception. Feelings and ideas are nurtured in this womb-like space with no pressure to do, only to be. Yin is patient and present, open and trusting. It's the unconfined, unspoken, unexpressed world of dreams and spirit. Here lie the roots beneath the tree in the dark night that bursts day's light. It's where anything is possible. Being an inward, ethereal force, it's linked to the elements of water and earth. As a result, all water and earth signs within the zodiac are considered yin, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Pisces. Keep in mind that this is distilled femininity and makes no reference to physical sexes. Yin energy lives within both male and female bodies. Then we have Sagittarius, optimism, exploration, and freedom. Trying to see from a more optimistic mindset the possibilities the future could bring instead of fearing the outcomes. Sagittarius is connected to our spiritual growth, which makes sense with Yin's energy here. It's almost like stoking the fires of passion. But a slow burn is better than um, a hot wildfire raid that can destroy lands. The Angels of Atlantis, so the um, angel working with the collective at this time, we have Zaf Zafkiel with Romance. It's almost like finding that romance within self, which kind of makes, it could be kind of a wishy-washy energy, but kind of makes sense with the yin and Sagittarius energy here. And I say that because the yin 
is said to be the feminine that kind of nurtures the masculine but the masculine kind of protects the feminine but it's kind of finding that balance right so Zafkiel is known as the sacred lover Zafkiel is aware of the yearnings that currently exude from your heart and intuitively receives the strong desire in your emotional body for the joy of romance whether this be in new love or an existing relationship the stirring is often related to the fact that an ideal of love has not been experienced for some time explore this notion truly identifying what could be the angels are returning you to a higher vibration of love so don't cling tightly to the idea of love from your past and be prepared to embark on a new way of loving this is a time of wondrous change in your loving propensities propensities trust that zafkiel will work this out for your highest good Chant He in your 8th chakra to stimulate the opening of your universal heart chakra. This will allow you to force... This will allow your force to envelop all aspects of your ideal love in service to the unified field of light, for we are all interconnected. So I'm assuming the 8th chakra, chakra is the higher heart chakra. So the heart chakra is um, said to be green in color, but the higher heart would be pink. So if you take a deep breath and you would feel it kind of in the center of your, your chest cavity. So that is a chant you can do anytime that you need, um, perhaps to feel um, your energy softening a bit, to temper one's energy. Because I myself, like in my birth, in my natal chart, my my masculine is Mars, so it's divinely masculine. Um, but my my. Venus, my feminine energy is Gemini. And no offense, Geminis, but I do consider this like the bipolar bitch. <laughs> um, the light and shadow. In biblical terms, I kind of see it like almost like the difference between Lilith and Eve, where Lilith is more um, independent, um, headstrong, where Eve is a lot more submissive. It's kind of finding that balance in between the two, right? The light and the shadow. I don't remember where I was going with that. Oh, so it, like there could be times when like you really want to just, you know, um, kick ass and take names. Is that the right? Just cut some heads off. <laughs> Basically to soften back into your, your natural energy. That's, um, what is it? There's a goddess in is it Tibetan. It's Parvati. Parvati and Kali are the dualistic natures of the feminine in that culture. So Kali is like ready to rage war. Anger takes over until her husband, which is Shabati, is that who it is? Brings her a baby and brings her back to her maternal natural or maternal instincts to pull her out of that energy. So you can use that chant of he and feel it in the the heart chakra to help soften and balance one's energy. As I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack here. So we're gonna pull the closing message from the Gateway of Light activation to see um, the portal or the next phase opening up to the collective. So as above, so below, so within, as without, connections to heaven and earth through the stargate of the heart. So what is the closing message for the collective at this time?
call forth from within the light of source. Thank you for standing at the forefront of my heart and mind. Thank you for activating the ancient wisdom of my soul. I welcome in the support of heaven, earth, the stars, light beings, and beyond. And so it is. Closing message. For the collective, the portal of the heart, the collective heart. The divine matrix. Interconnectedness, synchronicity, and God and God incidents. <laughs> Coincidences, but God into God into the I can't even say it. <laughs> I'ma put it down, you will fall in love. That is uh, what is that song? It's by Brandy. I'ma put it down, you'll fall in love. I'ma put it down, you'll fall in love. The divine matrix, where are you? Where are you at? This book is like me. Sometimes the, the 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 is included in the alphabetical order, sometimes it's not. <laughs> Everything is connected. Everything that was and ever will be is connected by an invisible bond of energy unifying every living being from the past, present, and even future. This isn't a new idea. Every great mystic through the ages has understood that everything is one and now scientists are beginning to provide evidence for it. The best way to describe the connection is as a lattice or grid, a divine matrix, where all points on this grid and we're all connected through it. I'm just, I'm seeing the sunflower in my, in my third eye, kind of following and greeting the sun, being grateful for the warmth of its rays. The attitudes of gratitude. It links us to our ancestry and loved ones, aspects of ourselves, past, present, and future, and also the ancient and divine wisdom held in the quantum field of the universe. This card shows a giant stargate opening up to the universe and a piece of sacred geometry known as the flower of life. This is quite literally a two-dimensional image of the divine matrix and the information held within it can help us begin to understand the inner and outer workings of this incredible universe. If you spend time with this image, you'll find multiple images within it, reminding us all that nothing is happening by chance and that even when we can't fully comprehend it, there's a greater plan unfolding. Meditate on the flower of life image on this gateway card. Affirm, I am connected to all beings, all intelligence, and all forms of light, past, present, and future. I am one with the one. You are in alignment with the oneness of life and the inner workings of the universe. Oh, look at that. We have 65, another 11. You are part of something great. That means that you're... That means that you are greatness expressing itself. Not one thing in your life has happened by chance. Even when you felt that things have been against you, a process has been unfolding, helping you understand that your connectedness to all things. So there's no need to feel insignificant or lonely. It's also important to remember that the universe is always working in your favor and for your highest good. You may have felt lost, but know that nothing is ever lost. For we are for we're all held in the heart of source and love is our connection to all things. Number 66. Sixes are our Virgo's energy, our health, our belief. Do on to all those. So I am feeling called to pull you, um, to pull us a language of the flowers card. Which, yes, I do normally close my readings with these cards, but it literally was talking about flowers. Sweet alyssum, clarity, bright paths of understanding will open. I am open to 
bright past of understanding. I'm, yeah, I'm hearing the song by Miley Cyrus too. I can buy myself flowers. No, I can't because I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> for the closing message. Although buying yourself flowers is actually a really good idea because um, if you put flowers on your table and um, take the time out of the patients to actually stop and smell them and inhale the scent, it'll actually help calm and relax the mind and kind of um, reverberate the energy of just gratitude, beauty for the simple things in life. So we also have Belladonna, silence, listen more and quiet be kind of goes back to this eight of wands energy because the eight of wands energy can be um, a card of communication but with it reversed it's like not needing to communicate at times perhaps even listening a little bit more which is definitely something i've had to do on my own journey going through spirituality and stuff there's almost like <clears throat> I don't know how to describe it, like voices in your head, but they're not, I mean, sometimes they are voices, sometimes it's just your own thoughts, right? They can become chaotic and you really have to like shut your, shut your own head up so you can listen, <laughs> but it helps. So that is the reading I have for you for, through this uh, solar eclipse energy. I hope it resonates. If it does, please feel free to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Many blessings, live, love, and light. Take care.